Hey guys, welcome back to another one of these A-level physics mechanics videos. Today we're going to be talking all about Newton's third law of motion. Now, first of all, we should type what Newton's third law is, and you do need to memorize this. Newton's third law simply states that any action has an equal and opposite reaction. So what does this mean in practice? Well, what it means in practice is that any time a force is exerted, you're going to have an equally opposite force. So any force that acts on an object uh, causes a force of equal magnitude to act from the object in the opposite direction. So what does this mean exactly? Well, let's say we have a box. Okay? And now let's say I'm here and I'm going to push this box with a force of 10 newtons. Now this box, when I push it, has to exert a force of the same type in the exact opposite direction with the exact same magnitude. Now you might be thinking, so then why do things accelerate, right? Because we have these two equal and opposite forces. Well, we have to keep in mind that I'm pushing on the box, which makes the box accelerate, and the box is pushing on me, which makes me accelerate away. Okay, Which kind of does make sense. Whenever you were to push something, you do get pushed in opposite directions. Here's a little, like for example, if you and your friends pushed each other, or you pushed one of your friends, you get pushed back slightly, right? Even if they don't push you back. Another way to actually uh, look at this is if you were on roller skates, right, or ice skates, and so let's put this is my little ice rink. And again, I'm standing here, and you're standing opposite me. right? And I push you with the force of 20 newtons. That would result in you automatically pushing me back with the force of 20 newtons. Now again, I'm not saying you literally push me, but the fact that I'm in contact with you and push, we would both actually move apart from one another in opposite directions, because we both have forces pushing us away. And this is actually why things in space can get really, really tricky, right? Because if you try and touch something, you, can, you end up pushing yourself away from that thing. So the key things to remember here is, and this is also why uh, you don't fall through the floor, right? So if I'm standing on, on the floor, right, and I weigh approximately, well, I weigh 75 kilograms, so let's say 750 newtons. Let's say 770 newtons, right? Now, if I draw just this diagram, what should happen? Well, there's an overall resultant force on the system, right? F equals ma, which means I should accelerate downwards. Now, I'm sitting in my chair right now. I'm not accelerating downwards, thankfully. Otherwise, I'd be crashing through the floor of my house. So, the only way that this can resolve itself is if there's an equal and opposite force pushing me back up from the ground, or in this case, my chair, back into me. Right? So, I'm exerting 770 newtons. That should be 70, so I just realised I didn't write 50. 770 newtons down on my chair. The chair's pushing up 770 newtons, so overall there is no acceleration, right? Which makes sense. I'm not falling downwards. Okay. Now there are a few caveats to this. Is that they have to the forces have to be the same pair. So sometimes, again, I'm going to use the classic. I'm pushing a box, right? So I'm pushing a box. 10 newtons here. And then there's going to be a force this way, which is friction, right? And what some people say is, okay, well, this is the equal and opposite force, friction. No, because these aren't the same type of force. So when we say there's a force of equal magnitude in, in the opposite direction, it's actually the exact same force. So if I call this a pushing force, when I push something, it pushes me back with the exact same um, rate. Now this does actually lead to some interesting things. For example, when I jump, right, if I'm standing on the earth, which I am, and I jump up, I exert a force downwards, and the earth exerts a force on me upwards. And so I get thrown up, but the earth technically actually gets pushed down ever so slightly. So why is it two different forces? Well, let's say, let's say I can jump pretty well, okay? Now let's say that is a 700 Newton jump. Right. So if I put this into F equals MA, for me, 700 Newtons 
equals, again, I weigh approximately 75 kilograms times A. So then A would equal 700 over 75. For now, let's say that that is 10 meters per second squared, right? So I'd accelerate upwards at 10 meters per second squared. Yeah? Now let's do it for the Earth now. That same 700 Newton force is equal to the mass of the Earth, which is a lot. <laughs> it's something on the order of, I think it's something along the lines of 6, 1.6 times 10 to the 26 kilograms times A, which means A is equal to 700 over 1.6 times 10 to the 26. So that's going to be, you know, a billion, billion, billionth of a meter every second squared. So technically speaking, when we jump up, the Earth does get pushed down, it accelerates downwards, but it's such a tiny, 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 tiny amount of, like, acceleration that it's not noticeable. But it does technically exist, okay? So the key thing to note here is that if they asked you, um, you push a box with 10 newtons of force, what's the kind of reaction force, or what force does it act on you, or label all of the forces, you need to label a reaction force going the other way. You have to. Otherwise, you don't get the mark. So if they, give you a, if they ask for a fully labeled diagram, you need to make sure you're including these equal and opposite forces because of Newton's third law. Okay? And then hopefully you can also see why it's, although it's an equal and opposite reaction, it doesn't mean that every force cancels each other out. Because keep in mind, we're talking about forces acting on an object, right? So if I just look at the forces acting on the box, it's 10 newtons to the right. If I look at the overall force on the system, it's 10 newtons to the right and then 10 newtons back. But it doesn't mean that they all cancel out. Things can still happen. Okay. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Um, now, one of the questions that they love to ask you, and this comes up in thermodynamics as well, it comes up in the kinetic model for gases, it comes up again and again and again, and it also comes up in just general mechanics, of course, is they give you a situation and then they say, explain with reference to Newton's laws of motion why displacing, and then why whatever, right? So it could be anything from why does pressure exist using Newton's, um, using the kinetic model of gases and Newton's laws of motion. It could be anything. But they ask you this same question, and all you have to do is apply it. Now, it should be noted that just for some exam technique, you need to use all three laws of motion. Okay? So you get one mark for every law of motion you co correctly relate to the situation. And then you get a final mark just for um, applying it to this. Um, so the, in this case, why this force causes the system to decelerate. Okay, And again, this comes up a lot. They actually ask, explain with reference to Newton's laws of motion, a hell of a lot. So it's a really good uh, kind of technique to be able to apply it. So I like to just think, OK, I like to work backwards, funnily enough. So I start with the third law and then I work my way back because it's the initial part. So let's read the actual situation. Parachute opens during the spacecraft's descent through the atmosphere, so we've got something falling. Figure 2 shows the parachute spacecraft system with the open parachute displacing the atmospheric gas, causing the system to decelerate. Okay. So what you can imagine is you have a little bunch of these little gas particles, right? And they're hitting the parachute. Yeah? And that also causes them to for the parachute to actually exert a force on the gas particles in general. So what you can say is gas particles collide with the parachutes, okay? Due to Newton's third law, and again, I'm going to bullet point, or this causes the parachute to exert a force on the gas particles. Okay, so that'd be my first bullet point. Next bullet point, well, that's Newton's third law done. So what does that mean in terms of Newton's second law, right? Or in this case, Newton's third, uh, first law. Newton's... God damn. First law states that if uh, a reaction force, sorry, resultant force, acts on a system, it will cause an acceleration, right? So Newton's first law says that an object in constant motion will stay in that motion unless acted on by an outside force. Well, we wrote here that a force is being exerted 
which means due to Newton's first law, there has to be some kind of acceleration, some kind of change in motion. Okay? Now, from Newton's second law, second law, this acceleration, or this acceleration slash force, is proportional to the mass of the, in this case, gas displaced, right? In this case, the mass of the gas displaced. So, this causes the parachute and spacecraft to slow down slash decelerate. And that would be a full four marks, okay? So, again, the kind of logic behind this is that you just need to make reference to all three Newton's laws in this context and then finish off with this. And it causes it to uh, slow down or decelerate, mainly because th there's a collision between the gas particles and the parachute. And because there's a collision, there are equal and opposite reaction forces. So if you want to say the parachute hits the gas, and therefore the gas exerts an equal and opposite force on the parachute, that's equally fine. And because of the first law, this means that there has to be an acceleration. And this acceleration is proportional to the mass of the gas displaced, which in this case, if you're falling through the atmosphere, you're going to be hitting a lot of air or atmosphere very, very quickly. So that acceleration isn't negligible at all. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, we will come back to this when we do kind of things like thermodynamics, because there are a bunch of questions that basically ask you with reference to Newton's laws of motion. But hopefully that was a good enough kind of overview for now.